But if you go to the theater, you're, you're observing, you're watching plots, you're looking for details, right? That's what you're supposed to do. You're, you're just observing it like a spectacle. So John says, we watched his life. We observed him like we were at the theater. We saw him do what he was going to do. We saw him act how he was going to act. Not that he was acting in, you know, uh, uh, somehow not being genuine or something. So then he said, when he says we touched him, it's the idea of, it's interesting, it's the idea of, of handling evidence. He says, when he says we handled him, it's not just that John did touch him, right? Peter did touch him. We can see where other people touched him. He did, he was touched in a physical sense, whether it was hugs or people touching his clothes to be healed or John leaning against him or whatever it might be. So he was physically touched. But he's not just saying like, we, we physically, you're like, oh, are you real? I mean, Thomas did that, right? But it's the idea that, that we handled him and, and, and we handled evidence that, that he proved to be real. Now, this is going to come into play later, too, because John is going to say anyone who says that Jesus didn't come in the flesh is the spirit of Antichrist. And that's part of Gnosticism. I don't want to talk too much about it now because we'll talk about it later. But one of the major things that, that really started almost from the beginning of Christianity is this idea of Gnosticism. Gnosticism, it comes from the Greek word gnosko, which we already talked about. And it's the idea of uh, secret knowledge or experiential knowledge. And so in, in their case, uh, and there were different Gnostics and they had different beliefs, but one of the things that was often said it was that Jesus didn't actually become a man. He wasn't actually in flesh. It was one of kind of the Gnostic ideas. That stems from uh, kind of human beings and their desire to have secret knowledge and, and to have that whole, the, the, the thing that comes with secret, all the stuff that comes with secret knowledge, superiority, pride, whatever it might be. Part of, well, at least some of the Gnostics believe that all matter was evil. So, for example, if it was temporal and it was matter, anything on the earth, like the chair, our body, whatever it might be, they would say it's evil. So because of that idea, they would then say Jesus could not have come in a body because that would have made him evil. Therefore, he was not actually flesh. And that's something that John's going to talk about later. But in, so one of the points in saying that we handled him is to say, no, he is flesh. We handled him. We touched him. He was, truly came in the flesh. He was God come as a man. And that he, he died upon the cross and he rose from the dead for our sins. So this is this, this, this uh, proclamation that he's making here. He's very emphatic about it. And it's very important because he's trying to communicate to people 50 years later here. And now, you know, 1900 years later, he's trying to make the point that Jesus is the real deal. We were there. And he says, the reason I want to make this point to you and I think this is great. It's not to bring you into subjection. It's not to bring you, now I have this list of do's and don'ts of holy versus unholy. Instead, it's to say, because I want you to get to know him. I want you to have fellowship with him. And, and so it's, it's a, I think maybe for some of us it is, and maybe for some of us it's not. It's kind of a revolutionary idea about what Christianity is. Because it, it can become very easy to look at Christianity and to say, well, uh, it's all about doing good. It's all about making sure you're a good person. It's all about making sure you do good works. It's all about making sure you don't do bad works. Well, there's a half truth in that, right? That we ought to seek to do righteous and we ought to avoid unrighteousness. We ought to, we ought to say no to sin. That's true. But with, as John puts it here, and as we get more through it, this isn't so that we can just get you know, golden stars for an ice cream trip at the end of the month. This is so that we can know God. Because when we do things that are sin, that has consequences in our life, and it separates us from God. Not like it did when, before we were saved, but it's just like if you have a friend. We'll all pretend like we have friends, right? So if you have a friend, and you do something to sin against that friend, that friend may forgive you, right? But it's going to be weird, isn't it? If I were to come home tonight from church, and Tam says, well, actually, I'm eating lunch here, so it's shot out. But let's pretend I was going to go eat, home at, uh, eat lunch at home, and, and Tam makes my lunch, and I, and I take the plate, and I go, what is this? And I throw it. I've never done that, but let's just say I did. So, ah, you know, and I throw it. And then I storm out of the house, and I come back 10 minutes later, and I say, oh, hey, what's for lunch, hon? She might forgive me. She probably would. She's a great lady. 
right? But it's going to be weird, isn't it? It's going to be weird for me. It's going to be weird for her. And we're going to have a, a separation of fellowship, aren't we? If I'm like, hey, do you want to go get coffee tomorrow morning and hang out? She's going to be like, uh, sh- sure, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Do I? So then I'm not comparing Tamara to Jesus, although she's a lot like him. What I am saying is that when we sin in a relationship, it causes a separation, doesn't it? It causes a, a, a terribleness. So John, in, in 1 John, he's making these points about fellowship and seeing, all these things, not just for the do's and don'ts. Very much more so, it's for the, the knowing him. And the crazy thing is, the reality is, the more that you know God, the more that the do's and don'ts become a joy. The more that saying no to ourselves isn't a drudgery. It's, 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 a, it's a victory. And so that only comes through fellowship. Otherwise, it's just that same drudgery. Mm-hmm.